Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles Ten and Tech. My name is Carlos Casanova, and I'm here with Kathleen Wilson and Shannon Good afternoon. Carlson. Hey Hello. guys. Today we have uh, Brian Peterson today with us from uh, Dialpad. Welcome, Brian. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, Brian, you know, Dialpad. I know you know industry has been changing quite a bit. You know, especially over the last decade or so. You know, we've seen a lot of remote work. We see companies, uh, you know, acquisitions. We see them moving locations, spreading out everywhere. Uh, managed service providers. Um, you know, the communication seems to be what we've always been challenged with, you know, in, in industry, you know, IT and business. Um, but it seems like your, you know, Dialpad products have been around for a while. And I think there's been a couple of, um, you know, incarnations of it uh, about what you do and, and what your products kind of enable from a communications perspective. Why don't you tell us a little, little bit about that? Yeah, so I can talk about first the, the sort of quick intro to the company. So our background was the founding team is actually from Google Voice. So we already have a big history in telecom and telephony and, and cloud with Google and all that. Um, and so we started, I think we, we basically hit the scene first in 2012 with the uh, Uber conference, so our conferencing system, which uh, we, we won TechCrunch Disrupt with that, which was sort of kickstarted everything. Um, you know, it was our way to test out our cloud platform. So we basically built, you know, a cloud platform behind it that Uber Conference runs on. And then Dialpad, which is our business phone system, that is, you know, that with Uber Conference is 100% pure cloud. Um, it's, it's sort of the idea of, you know, just like in your other SaaS offerings, that your phone service should also be something that you can use from the web or use from any device and instantly, you know, allocate to users and employees. Um, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I was a, a, a Google Voice user actually before it, it was even Google Voice. Um, so right. I'm very familiar yeah. with it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it, and actually for a period of years when I was uh, in the early days of, of consulting, um, it was pretty much my primary uh, phone system. So uh, very familiar with the technology and it's been amazing to watch how far it's come in, you know, almost uh, you know, eight, nine years now. So, um, you know, it sounds like you guys have built on that. Um, you know, how are people and customers and using your technology today? I mean, what's kind of the big enabling factor for them? Yeah, I assume they're all, you know, for the most part, they're looking for a serious phone system. So they need, they need something for their business that's similar to the other software they're already using for their business. And we're either doing with two different types of customers. We're dealing with like Uber who didn't really have a PBX phone system. They didn't really have a business phone system at all. But then they realized that they got to a certain scale where they can't have people using their personal cell phones anymore. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something that like you can't, as, a, as you know, an IT admin, you can't track personal cell phone usage really well. You can't manage you know, the analytics around that. And you know, if, if someone leaves the company, you don't want their, their phone number and their contacts going with it. So there was that, that was sort of the need for like Uber, which is you know, we're growing fast and we're all over the world. We need something that like we can actually you know, spin up and spin down to every new employee right away across the world and then let them be able to access it from any device they have. So including that be their personal cell phone or you know, their home desktop browser, whatever it is, that's sort of the trend. I mean, that's the trend with, you know, with almost everyone these days is that you, know, you work from home, you work from the road, you work you know, from the office. And so, you know, for Uber's case, they're, they're, they're quickly deploying people. They need to be able to get phone numbers and phone service to people across the world. Uh, the other side of that is the traditional side, which is like Motorola for us, which is they came from, you know, a PBX system with, you know, 22,000 employees, 42 countries. They had 35 telephony vendors to manage all of that. And so to them, it was like, there's just so much work to maintain that, that it made sense to get to something that's pure cloud where they actually can get you know, de again, deploy, you know, all these people worldwide and manage them from one place. You know, they had 10,000 phones removed. They had, you know, they were live in four months in, you know, over, you know, 40 locations. Um, and that's sort of like the power of, you know, of the cloud-based SaaS offering stuff. And that's kind of what we're built around. Yeah, definitely. I, I've seen some tremendously large uh, support center, conference center deployments that, uh, uh, the, the amount of investment that goes into just building out that infrastructure, but maintaining it, upgrading it every couple of years. Uh, I mean, it's insane what it takes to, to run a, a large scale uh, conferencing system, trunk system, et cetera. Excellent. So Brian, you know, you're taking away what some people feel is their job, like 
they will have PBXs, they will have, you know, the 35 vendors and everything. So what makes Dialpad different in their deployment and how they work with customers to ease the transition from having to own their own phone system end to end to the value of deploying cloud-based systems, specifically around telephony? I mean, it's more just, you know, it's the ease of it. So, you know, IT teams don't want to deal with supporting, again, 35 different telephony vendors. So, and, and there already, there's already the trend um, in, in all business moving to the cloud. So they don't, you know, the telephony piece, the PBX piece, or the phone system piece is kind of like the last, the last big thing to go. I mean, I think everyone else, you know, if you ask, like they're already basically using something that's cloud-based for most of their work. And so like, this is like the last piece. And I think part of the reasons why it's the last piece, it's been one of the hardest things to, to do. So moving telephony, moving like actual phone numbers to the cloud across the world is a lot harder than, you know, doing an online database, um, you know, a ticketing system, you know, things like that. And so, you know, they're finally there. They knew they were going to get there. It's not like a surprise to IT to say, hey, wow, this, you know, cloud-based phone system, like, you know, we should try it out. They kind of know they want to get there. It was just there wasn't the right product at the right time. And just like they like their other software, you know, instant provisioning, you can get someone online with a phone number in, you know, 30 seconds to anywhere in the world makes a lot of sense to them for efficiency. And then they take those same people and they put them on things that are more important to the company. You know, they're not wasting their time on like rudimentary stuff. They're, they're being creative. They're thinking of better ways to, you know, make their team efficient. And so, to them, it's sort of a no-brainer. Just like the, there just wasn't anything great yet, and that's kind of why, like, when we looked at Google Voice, because Google Voice was serving, you know, 10 million plus users, so scale to us in cloud was not a problem. It was just a matter of like, hey, the same thing makes a lot of sense for businesses. Like, why isn't there something like this for businesses? So that's sort of, you know, where we went. And you know, just like we have a lot of fans of Grand Central and Google Voice, they all, you know, a lot of them are like tech and IT people who are like, oh my gosh, think. Thank you. Now it's actually available for businesses to them. And they're like, you know, they're super in love with it. And we make sure it's easy to use, easy to deploy. The users love it just like they loved Google Voice. So, yeah. so, so Brian, I would think that something like this, um, you know, from a continuity and recovery perspective, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, obviously what's going on in Houston right now. Uh, it makes, it makes, re you know, maintaining your continuity, your business continuity, or in a, you know, in a real disaster like they have there, just a lot easier, you know, minor, you know, relatively speaking, especially from the, you know, the personal mm -hmm. aspect. But I would think that that also is a big advantage to uh, organizations that you can literally just move the people over if they're relocated. A lot of those people are going to be out of, you know, their homes or offices for, for months on end. And it's not like the old, you know, sun guard model where you, you know, yeah. you roll up a couple of tractor trailers with equipment. So, you know, do you, do you see companies coming to you from, that being a driver for uh, for moving, I think mobility is. So I mean, look at you know, look at your email. Like, does anyone? I mean, everyone now mostly uses an email cloud server, right? You can access your email from your cell phone wherever you want. There's a million different ways to access your email. There wasn't this for phones. So there's two there's two important things you need on your business card that everyone has in the world: it's an email address and a phone number. You know, the phone number is basically the largest social network in the world. Everyone has one, everyone knows how to use it. So like to be connected to your work number, wherever you go and have the power to be connected to it, you're not at your desk. It's something like, I think there's a number, 60% of like the Fortune 1000 employees are away from their desk 60% of the time. So 60% of the time they're away from their desk. Like that's, that's not gonna work for the traditional desk phone, you know, that, that rings and only can be answered when you're there. It should find you wherever you go. Should have, you should have control over it wherever you go. And back to like the example of like you mentioned, sort of like the Houston thing, you know, we actually have one example of the second city who use this. Um, so they have a bunch of different offices, their comedy like organization yep. where they put on shows. Well, they had their, their a fire destroyed their, all of their IT equipment. So, and they had basically their entire PBX system go up in flames. So for them shifting to the cloud, then finally it was like, okay, this makes a lot more sense that this ever happens again. I don't go down. My business doesn't go down. It's, you know, my employees can go work from home and do the same thing they were doing at work. And you can do that with everything else you do at work, except really for your phone system. So you don't want, you know, we have people who can answer calls on a beach for the support org. We can have them transfer to someone across the world by typing on their keyboard, you know, by name 
to, you know, to transfer a support call, you know, and you don't have to figure out a desk phone with, you know, a terrible interface and a bunch of buttons that is a lot harder to work than your beautiful HD screen in front of you with a full-size keyboard either. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you know, I've been adjacent to the telephony world for, for you know, 20 years now, and it's amazing to watch the things that we were trying to do even 15 years ago with PBX systems and as we were moving into the VoIP worlds, um, you know, the things we tried to do then that we couldn't quite deliver on and the technology finally being available to do these things and moving into the cloud where, you know, people can innovate faster and, and you know, come up with all, all these innovative ideas and then, you know, not just deploy it across one company, but deploy it across all the customers of, of a service like Dialpad. So, uh, it's it's a pretty amazing time that we're living in where this technology uh, is available so easily, um, you know, with a minimum amount of infrastructure investment on the part of the customer uh, to get these robust features. So it, it definitely very great. So Well, Brian, that was great, Brian. Yeah, thank go ahead, you. Go ahead, Kathy. Sorry. Sorry, you're wrapping up? Sorry. No, no, clap, clap, no, that, no, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes... Sometimes we get our, our signals crossed. Kathleen's back to clouding. Um, Brian, thank you so much for, uh, <laughs> for joining us today. Um, you know, it's, as Shane said, I think it, it is pretty amazing how, how quickly things have changed in really such a short period of time mm -hmm. that, uh, you yeah, know, and what it's enabling is, is really the key, you know, as we talk about in a lot of, um, a lot of our regular discussions, you know, enablement of business, because that's ultimately what this is, what this is about. So thanks again for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing, uh, you know, the future of Dialpad. Thank you again. Thanks, Thank guys. You for having me. Bye. Thank you.